Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is me, Rush Dead Dixon Vixen. And today I had a very interesting day after I met my, counts met my counselor. Um, today I'm going, today I went to this, after I visited my counselor, I stopped at the Salvation Army and I just hit a gold mine. Wow, which is awesome. And uh, so far, don't mind me, I got dinner cooking in the oven and it'll be ready soon. So <laughs> so eventually I got a lot of DVDs for, for great prices. It was, a, it was a bonanza and I found quite a lot for my collection. So here we go. This is what I got. Like some of them are out of print and some of them are like classic movies. I, the move, one movie I got, one of my, which, which is a movie I saw when I was, uh, young, uh, when it came out in 1992, the film is Sister Act with Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, relieve all the fun, laughter, and irresistible music of Sister Act, the inspired comedy hit that packed pews everywhere. Whoopi Goldberg stars as a sassy low rent lounge singer forced to hide out from the mob in the last place anyone would ever look for her, a convent. While she's there, her irreverent behavior attracts a flock of faithful followers and turns the nun's tone-deaf choir into a soulful chorus of sw swinging, singing sisters. But when the group earns rave reviews, her sudden celebrity jeopardizes her hidden identity. Harvey Keitel and Kathy Jimmy join a heavenly cast in this habit-forming comedy bursting with 60s Motown hits. Mm-hmm. So this is a classic. You gotta have. You gotta have this. <laughs> okay. Uh, next one, I got is it's a two disc collector's item. It's a two disc set, and it came in the 60th anniversary comm commemorative edition, and the film is Pearl Harbor. That came out in 2001. I thought it was pretty good. It was a pretty good movie. It was directed by Michael Bay. And it has Josh Hartnett and Kate Beckinsale. And uh, Ben Affleck in it. It says, History comes alive in the unforgettable epic motion picture Pearl Harbor. The spectacular blockbuster brought to the screen by Jerry Bruckheimer and Michael Bay. Astounding visual and audio effects put you at the center of the event that changed the world. That early Sunday morning in paradise when warplanes screamed across the peaceful skies of Pearl Harbor and jolted America into World War II. This real-life tale of ca ca catastrophic defeat, heroic victory, and personal courage focuses on the war's devastating impact on two daring young pilots, Ben Affleck and Josh Hartnett, and a beautiful dedicated nurse, Kate Beckinsale. Per Har Pearl Harbor is an extraordinary movie making a breathtaking reenactment of the date which will live in infamy and a heartfelt tribute to the men and women who lived it. So, it's this came in a two disc and so uh, like uh, like this is I like we all remember it remembered uh, Pearl Harbor like it was it took place in Hawaii in uh, 1941 and we've heard a lot a lot of it like I heard the the, the historic uh, landmark is, is in Hawaii because Pearl Har there is Pearl Harbor in Hawaii and I and Hawaii is pretty pretty expensive but if I did go there I would love to see it okay next in my list this was a, a classic movie I saw in the movie theaters it was a it was a it was a surprise hit it came out in 2002 and uh and it's a funniest movie like it it was like it 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 surpassed like it, it was a box office smash it was a surprise hit and the film is my big fat greek wedding and uh rita wilson and it's about rita wilson and tom hanks are our producers in the film and like it's a it's based in it and written by the star nia vardalos and uh, and it talks about Rita Wilson and Tom Hanks uh, had an actual Greek wedding, 
and which was interesting. And Tom and Rita are still married as of this day. And it's got a great cast. And his is Gus. It's about Tula is 30 and unmarried, which means as a nice Greek girl, she's a failure. All her cousins did the right thing, married Greek boys and made Greek babies. So everyone worries, what will become of Tula? Then one day she sees the ultimate unattainable guy and realizes the only way her life will get better if she gets away from her big fat Greek family. Tula escapes from the family restaurant. She exchanges her seating hostess jacket for a college diploma, convinces her aunt to give her a, jo a new job, and trades in her Coke bottle glasses for contact lenses just in time for him to walk back into her life. Ian Miller is tall, handsome, but definitely not Greek. The courtship is an Olympian culture clash. Can Ian handle Tula, her parents, her aunts, uncles, cousins, and several centuries of Greek heritage? Will Tula discover the love she's been missing right in the heart of her big fat family? One thing for one thing is for sure, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, with Ian's proposal, Tula is headed for her big fat Greek wedding, <laughs> which is, uh, which is, which is going to be very, very interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, next film is a classic film. It came out in 1979 and it was directed by Francis Ford Coppola. And it starred Marlon Brando, Martin Sheen, Robert Duvall, Lawrence Fishburne, Dennis Hopper, and Harrison Ford. And it's a redo, and it's a re, it's a re, and it's a movie. That it, it's a real good hit. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. And the movie is Apocalypse Now redo. It's it's about the definite version of Francis Ford Coppola's. Stunning ver vision of the heart of darkness in all of us. Re-edited and remastered with 45, 49 minutes of additional footage. Nominated for eight Academy Awards. This classic and compelling Vietnam War epic stars Martin Sheen as Army Lieutenant Willard, who is sent on a dangerous and mesmerizing odyssey into Cambodia to assassinate a renegade American colonel named Kurtz, Mar played by Marlon Brando who has succumbed to the horrors of war and barricaded himself in a remote outpost. So, oh yes, yeah, so, but this, it's got a great cast and great, it's a great cast. And the redo came out in uh, 2001 and uh, the, but the film was made in 1979. So, so this is good to have in a collection. Okay, next film I got, movie I got, it, it's a classic hit. It's from 1985, and everybody, they say it's the best 80s movie ever, besides John Hughes films and some other films. So, yeah, so, and the film, it's directed by Steven Spielberg. It's, it's by Steven, it's a Steven Spielberg film, and it's directed by the late Richard Donner, God rest his soul. And the film, and I saw this episode on One Tree Hill, that how Quinn said it was her favorite movie. And the film is The Goonies. It's, uh, it's from the imagination of Steven Spielberg. The Goonies plunges a band of small heroes into a swashbuckling surprise around every corner quest beyond their wildest dreams. Following a mysterious treasure map into a spectacular underground realm of twisting passages, outreaches booby traps and a long lost pirate ship full of golden doubloons. The kids race to stay one step ahead of a family of bumbling bad guys and a mild manner monster with a face only a mother could love. A family adventure classic from start to buccaneering finish. The Goonies is a cinematic treasure trove of breathtaking action, dazzling effects and shiver ye, shiver your timbers, thr timbers thrills. Okay, so eventually it's got a great cast, like it's got Corey Hain, God rest his soul, it's got uh, Josh Brolin, and it also had the Truffle Shuffle and all that. So eventually it is a classic. I didn't really see the whole thing, but I've seen bits of it, but I can't wait to see the whole film. Mm -hmm. So eventually, and then next I have, it's a, it's a classic film. It's a special collector's edition. 
and it came out in uh, 1953, and it won an Oscar for Audrey Hepburn as Best Actress in a Leading Role. Well deserved, and it also stars Gregory Peck, both both great legends, and the film is Roman Holiday, and it's in, it's Audrey Hepburn's Oscar-winning performance in her first starring role. Roman Holiday was nominated for 10 Academy Awards and Audrey Hepburn captured an Oscar for her portrayal of a modern-day princess rebelling against her royal obligations who explores Rome on her own. She meets Gregory Peck, an American newspaper man who, seeking an exclusive story, pretends ignorance of, his, of her true identity. But his plan falters as they fall in love. Eddie Albert contributes to the fun as Peck's carefree cameraman pal. Stylishly directed by William Wyler, this romantic comedy ranks as one of the most enjoyable films of all times. So eventually, I, I and I definitely want to get. I haven't seen Breakfast at Tiffany's yet. And I heard it, it was an ama- It was a really good movie, and I do love Audrey Hepburn. So, so Roman Holiday should have this should be in your collection. And coming up next, is I got a film. And it's a it's an uncut version, and I've seen this movie for ages. And the original, it, they did a sequel, a long-awaited sequel, and a prequel, but the nothing can last the the very beginning because usually when there's one movie out and then they put out sequels and all that, it is not better than the orig- than the first one. But if, except for Star Wars and all that, and the dark Na- and the cat and the and the Christopher Nolan's uh, Dark Knight series, like the film. It stars Jim Carrey and Def- Jeff Daniels, titled "Dumb and Dumber," and it's the more dumber than a of a version. And it's it's longer, funnier, dumber with never be seen before footage. <laughs> The dumbest duo in comedy rides again in this longer, never seen version of the funniest movie in the world. Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels are hilarious as a pair of lovable losers on a cross-country road trip to return a briefcase full of cash to its beautiful owner. During the course of their moronic mission, these indomitable dimwits confound cops, kidnappers, rednecks, and anyone unlucky enough to cross their paths. Featuring deleted and alternate scenes, a retrospective documentary, and six more outrageous minutes, this is the most satisfying stupid comic caper of all time. (laughs) Okay, just a moment. My food's ready. Okay, I'll do one more film. Okay, next up, it's a Stan- it's a film from uh, Stanley Kubrick, and uh, it came out in uh, nineteen. Uh, it was released in. Uh, let me see. It was released in nineteen sixty eight. And it was remastered in 2001. And the film, they say it was the grandest of science fiction films. And I know if you love science fiction, you have to get this. This is 2001 A Space Oddity. It says, 2001 A Space Oddity is a countdown to tomorrow, a roadmap to human destiny, a quest for the infinite. It is a dazzling Academy Award winning visual achievement, a compelling drama of man versus machine. A stunning meld of music and motion, it may be the masterwork of director Stanley Kubrick, who co-wrote the screenplay with Arthur C. Clarke. And it will likely excite, inspire, and enthrall for generations. To begin his voyage into the future, Kubrick visits our prehistoric ape and ancestry past, then leaves millennia via one of the most mind-blowing jump cuts ever conceived into colonized space, and ultimately whisks astronaut Bowman into uncharted realm of space, perhaps even into immortality. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. Let the on the mystery of a journey unlike any other begin. And the music, including the music, like it turned out the theme from that song is the theme for Ric Flair. Dum, 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 da dum. Oh man, so. But it has, but it has this theme music that was that was a great gen, that was a good generation. <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. Huh? Me dinner.
sorry, my chicken and potatoes, sweet potatoes are out. No, the vegetables are being steamed in a steamable bag. Okay, next, next on my list, I got, it's a special edition. It won seven Academy Awards. It came out in 1990, and it's a Kevin Costner's directorial debut, and which he won the Oscar for. And the film, like, at first I wasn't interested. I didn't really want to see it. But eventually, now that I'm older, like, I was about 18 when it came out. The film is Dances with Wolves. And it's one of the epic movies of all time. It's a winner of seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture. A truly spectacular film that combines action, romance, and breathtaking adventure. Dances with Wolves is a cinematic masterpiece. That is nothing short of triumph, of a triumph. Set to protect a U.S. outpost on the desolate frontier, Lieutenant John Dunbar finds himself alone in the vast wilderness, befriending the very people he sent to protect the outpost from, the Sioux Indians. Dunbar slowly comes to revere those he once feared, but when the encroaching U.S. Army threatens to overrun the Sioux, he is forced to make a choice, one that will forever change his destiny and a proud and that of a proud and defiant nation. Like he also produced it too, and he directed it, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Okay, I got so many here. Next up, this is a film that um, I wanted to get on DVD and it's from Tim Burton and I do love Tim Burton's work. The original Batman, the first time Batman with Michael Keaton and he did like uh he did corpse bride and sweeney todd and all that and it won it's for golden globe nomination it's a and it's an account and it's a best original score from danny elfman and the film is big fish and an adventure as big as life itself. It stars Ewan McGregor, Albert Finney, Billy Crudup, and Jessica Lange. And, and it's about... In the heartwarming film Big Fish, director Tim Burton brings his in, in mitable, in mitable imagination to a journey that delves deep into a fabled relationship between a daughter, dying father and his son. The son recreates the father's elusive life in a series of legends and myths inspired by the f few facts he, he knows, discovering both his father's great feats and his great failings. So it's got a great cast. It's got a, it's got a good cast. and mm -hmm. So it was, it was, they have a great cast and, a lot, and, it, and, it's, a, and it's a wonderful movie uh, by Tim Burton. Next movie, um, it came out, I think, 1986 or 87, 88. Uh, it stars, oh, oh yes, came, oh, came out in 86. That's before he did Top Gun. It stars Tom Cruise, and it, and he played this, and it's like an event, and it's like a fantasy movie. And it, it was directed by Ridley Scott. I love Ridley Scott's work. And, uh, and it's the ultimate edition. And the film is called Legend. And it says, Tom Cruise stars in this visually stunning fantasy adventure in which pure good and evil battle to the death amidst spectacular surroundings. Set in a timeless mythical forest inhabited by fairies, goblins, unicorns, and mortals, this fan fantastic story has Tom Cruise, a mis mystical forest dweller, chosen by fate to undertake a heroic quest. He must save a beautiful princess and defeat the demonic Lord of Darkness, or the world will be plunged into a never-ending Ice Age. Co-starring Billy Barty and Alice Playton and directed by Ridley Scott, famed for his remarkable settings and unparalleled imagery, the incredibly realized fable is the stuff movie legends are made of. So eventually, uh... So eventually, um... So this is a good, this is a classic film made in 1986. Next one I got is a film by Harrison Ford. And, I, and it's directed by Alan J. Pakala, 
who did a lot who did a lot of good work um it stars harrison ford and it's a mystery it's a thriller and i love mystery thrillers and all that and the film is called it's called presumed innocent which i saw years ago and i and i just decided to get the film mm -hmm. it says presumed innocent is a suspenseful whodunit a sexy thriller a powerful courtroom drama and a dazzling vehicle for Harrison Ford. He plays a deputy prosecutor engaged in an obsessive, obsessive affair with a co-worker who is murdered. Soon after, he's accused of the crime and his fight to clear his name becomes a whirlpool of lies and hidden passions. Brian Dennehy, Bonnie Bedelia, Raul Julia, and Paul Winfield co-star under the crackling direction of Alan J. Pacula, who did the Pelican Brief and the Devil's Own. Suspense master Pacula uses Scott Turrell's bestseller to examine the American legal system, discovering the sword of justice is double-edged. Okay, and my next film, next one I got. It's a, uh, it's a contemporary. It was one. It's a came in a contemporary classics. It's a film by Oliver Stone, and it, and it was the Academy Award. It won Best Director and Best Picture at the Oscars. I seen it a long time ago, and it's 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 about uh, the casualties of war. It has like Tom Berenger and Willem Dafoe and Charlie Sheen, and some other actors who made their break. Like Johnny Depp was in the movie too. I think Johnny Depp made his acting debut. No, he made his acting debut in Nightmare on Elm Street, but this movie. That won the Oscar for Best Picture. Platoon. Yeah, and um, it's a winner of four Academy Awards, including Best Picture, and based on the first-hand experience of Oscar-winning director Oliver Stone, Platoon is powerful, intense, and starkly brutal. Harrowing, realistic, and completely convincing, it is a dark, forget unforgettable memorial to every soldier whose innocence was lost in the war-torn jungles of Vietnam. Chris Taylor is a young, naive American who, upon his arrival in Vietnam, quickly discovers that he must do, do battle not only with the Viet Cong, but also with the growing fear, with the gnawing fear, physical exhaustion and intense anger growing within him. While his two commanding officers draw a fine line between the war they wage against the enemy and the one they fight with each other, the conflict, chaos, and hatred permeate Taylor suffocating his realities and numbing his feelings to man's highest value life okay so great director oliver stone did jfk platoon he also did the doors about jim morrison i love that movie which is awesome and there's one that came in its original packaging and it's a um, and it's a comedy. It came out, I believe, in nineteen in nineteen eighty eight. I believe came in nineteen eighty eight. I believe, and it's a and it stars Steve Martin, and everybody loved that movie, and it was a mass movie. And the film is Roxanne. It says, comic genius Steve Martin delivers an incredible performance as an engaging small town fire chief who has only one tiny flaw. No make that one huge flaw. His astonishingly long nose. Although he considers it no laughing matter, the hilarity never stops as C.D. Bales contends with jerky nose jokes, a bumbling crew of firemen, and his secret love for gorgeous astronomy student Roxanne. Unfortunately, she is attracted to fireman Chris, who's who's tall on looks and short on conversation. And when C.D. agrees to coach the dumbstruck Chris in his pursuit of the fair maiden, this ticklish triangle dissolves into hilarious scenes of rib-tickling romantic misadventures, a contemporarily loved story of a mistaken identity and unrequited love. Roxanne is an unforgettable comedy that Siskel and Ebert call a comic masterpiece. And it also has Shelley Duvall in it. So uh, this is a movie you got, this is a movie you gotta have, like, I believed it came out in eighty seven believed it came out in eighty eight or eighty seven that it came out. But if you've seen this movie, you know. Yeah, you know. Next up I got two more movies to show. This one this 
is a, it's a film by Alan, the late Alan Parker, who did uh, Fame and uh, Angel Heart. And like, uh, Fame, one of my favorite Alan Parker films. It stars Gene Hackman and Willem Dafoe. And the film is called Mississippi Burning. And it's starring two-time Oscar winner Gene Hackman and, and Academy Award nominee Willem Dafoe. Mississippi Burning ranks as one of the most potent and insightful views of racial turmoil yet produced. Nominated for six Oscars and winner of an Academy Award for Best Cinematography, this emotionally charged film vividly captures a crucial chapter in American history. As three civil rights activists drive down a desolate stretch of highway, headlights ominously near, draw near, telling each other to stay calm, they have no way of knowing that in minutes they will disappear into the night and spark one of the most explosive murder investigations in history. Enter Straight Lace Ward and deceptively easygoing Anderson. Can these two philosophically opposed FBI agents overcome their differences and uncover the chilling mystery of a small Ku Klux Klan riddled ridden community before an entire town is torn apart by racism. So I guess I heard I heard a lot of it's got a great cast and it's and it's supposed to be a, an amazing movie. So so Mississippi Burning. Yeah, so I'm going to give this a go because I just love this. I love mysteries and all that. And my last movie I got on the gold mine is a film that I saw just saw recently about uh, six months ago and it was on AMC and it's a, it's an MGM MGM it's a comedy it starred Rodney Dangerfield and it's and it's hilarious and the film is back to school and it's directed by Alan Metter and and it also has a young Robert Downey Jr in it and uh, and it's a uh, Rodney Dangerfield makes the gray with his laugh riot comedy that's in a class of it, class of its own. Higher education will never be the same when co-stars Sally Kellerman, Robert Downey Jr., Sam Kinison, God rest his soul, Ned Beatty, and more join the maniac as he takes on the brainiacs. Thornton Mellon's son is a college misfit, so Thornton's lending some fatherly support by enrolling as a fellow freshman. Who cares if the owner of the tall and fat clothing empire never finished high school? Thornton's pockets are deep enough to buy a ticket to class and hire NASA to do his homework. But when he ticks off his professor and then steals his girlfriend, Thornton takes things just a little too far. Now he'll have to hit the books instead of his bank account or go back to being the world's wealthiest dropout. Dangerfield is sensational in this howling funny comedy that scores an A+. So, uh, yep, so that's my gold mine, Dan. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So sixteen movies in total. Like they were like they were like a fifty percent off. And so for all sixteen movies, guess how much I paid? Twenty-three dollars. Gold mine. Once you get once you hit the gold mine, go for it. Yeah, so make sure you look out for a lot of gold mines. So, okay, well, that is it for me. I'm going to get my dinner ready. So if you have any questions about this video, uh, please, con please, uh, you can always uh, subscribe to my channel or, or put, a, uh, put, a, put a comment on my channel. But my major rule is please be respectful. So, uh, and make sure you join me uh, this Sunday, Fear the Walking Dead. Uh, season 7, episode 14, entitled Divine Providence. So this is me, Rush Dead Dixon Vixen, saying good night and God bless.